Hey, it's Roger Roger, and today I wanted to talk about self-harm. You know, why do people engage in self-harm? You know, especially you look at teenagers sometimes who might do cutting, which is, which is where they get a sharp object and they cut, they make cuts on their, their their arms and stuff. Why would they do that? Well, Tony Robbins came out with this these, this concept of these four key drivers that human beings have. So the first key driver is significance, and the opposite of that that key driver is connection, and another key driver is certainty. And the opposite of that key driver is uncertainty. Now, with people who self-harm, I'm generalizing here, but this can be, I guess, symptomatic and a way of decoding why a person is self-harming. It's because they get significance from it. They get attention from it. Usually, it's a teenager who's ignored. Both parents work really hard, um, or perhaps they just don't give them the attention they need. Now, every child, every individual is different. Some people have different significant needs than others. Some people may, may need more attention, and others may need le less attention and want to be just left alone. But for a person who is self-harming, it's a way of getting attention. It's a way of expressing their need to get attention and that is how they do it and it's it's a it's a surefire way to do it because once they do it once they self-harm they get attention from their parents they get attention from their peers they get attention from people at school maybe they get to put the bandages on their arms and it just gets a lot of attention their way even if they go in the community with bandages on their arms people notice they look at them it gives them that significance so what can they do um, and, and also, before I go into the next step of what they can do, is, which is a more functional way of getting significance, the other side of that is they need certainty. They definitely need certainty. And they're, they'll, they're, these individuals who have self-harm, they will have generally high anxiety and a high, super high need for certainty in their life. And the self-harming will actually fulfills their need for significance by getting them attention and actually fulfills their need to get certainty because they know once they self-harm, they're immediately going to get a lot of attention. And it's going to provide them with that, their, I guess their needs, their quota of attention, they get, they're in control of that, they control others through their self-harming. So what's a, you know, what are the options for a person who self-harms? Well, you know, what, what's the more empowering ways? Well, it's, a, it's about getting them to develop more functional and healthy ways to get certainty. Um, to get significance, I mean. So, you know, maybe a lot of praise for when they do other things other than self-harming. You know, giving them attention in other things, in other hobbies and other activities is going to build the significance muscle in, in, them getting it, in them getting their attention needs met elsewhere, their significance needs met elsewhere. Spend time with them. You know, that shows them they're significant, that, they're, that you're going to spend time with them when they're not... Um, self-harming you know so so you want to spend time with them when they're doing cool activities when they're you know when they're doing their homework find ways to spend time with them to give them that significance yeah and the more you can build those that empowering sphere of significance the less they're going to need to rely on dysfunctional needs like self-harm to get significance uh, from their from their friends and family the other way is to provide certainty for your child so uh, if they're in a place of self-harm it's 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 been probably because there's too too much uncertainty. They're in a place of massive, massive, massive anxiety, and, and what they're doing is by self-harming, they get everyone rushes in, everyone gives them attention, it provides them certainty, safety, and comfort very briefly. And but what it is, what's happening is there's an internal anxiety, and that's probably from past trauma. It may have been in the womb, uh, it may have been from when they were very young. About whatever's going on, you know, the, you know, life is a big trauma box. There's a lot of things going on that that traumatize individuals in this world today. It's why we have so many wars. It's why we have so much conflict. Uh, conflict. That's why we have jails. <laughs> Simply because of the trauma. If we didn't have all those things, then we wouldn't need jails. We wouldn't have wars. Everything would just be really cool and peaceful everywhere. So they they've probably got those that internal stuff, and you need to do you know work with a psychologist, a counselor, or someone like me to help them uh, work through that internal trauma. The other thing is to provide certainty. So give them a routine of certainty, a routine where they can build that certainty and safety and comfort, knowing that certain things are going to be at a certain time. You say you're going to be home at a certain time, you're home at a certain time. Dinner is a certain time. Homework's a certain time. Uh, making their bed, a roster of chores is at a certain time. That is going to build their, their need for certainty. It's going to fulfill that need for certainty so much so that they, they will not need to self-harm because 
um, because their certainty needs will be met. Their significance needs to be met because, you know, you're paying a lot of attention. You're making sure they're running through their chores, their activities, the things they need to do, their homework. And their certainty need will be met because everything's routine, everything's structured. When things are going to go wrong is when they lose significance, they start losing your attention, you become too busy at work or with whatever other stuff, other, you know, you know, looking after other members of the family or whatever it is. Or there is an unstructured environment. There's there's no structure. There's no there's very little certainty. It's very vague. They're left to themselves a lot of the time, where they work out their own routine. So that's these are the two keys to helping. You know, you if you've got a child, you know, you can give some advice to someone who's who has a, a teenager that ex does self harm, and that's what you, that's what you can do. I, I remember this because I had a friend of mine who was asking me about her their their child who did some self harm with cutting and that. And so, uh, in retrospect, after many years of thinking about it, uh, this this is how it's caused significance, a lack of significance, a, a need to create more functional ways of getting significance, and a need to create certainty, more certainty, a stable routine that the person can meet their need for certainty, which will decrease their anxiety and increase their certainty levels, increase their safety and comfort levels, and increasing uh, significance by giving them more attention, making sure you spend time with them, Better, even better, put the two together, routine and significance. You give them a lot of significance as you work to, with them on their routine and that certainty, yeah? It's, they, these are, these are children, these are teenagers with a super, super need for significance and a super, super need for certainty. So you, you can't just treat all your children the same because everyone's gonna have different needs. And this child or this teenager particularly has a super need for significance and a super need for certainty. So you must provide that in order to get the results you're seeking. Thanks, this is Roger Roger. Thank you so much for checking out my page. Please click like and share if you want to do that. And uh, hey, get in touch with me if you think I can help you. Take care.